And now I'm going to review with you uh, the applications that are installed on your Smart Swim and what their use, use case, what they're used for each of the apps. And I'm just going to scroll the carousel using the Smart Swim. You can see here I'm going to use uh, forward, back, and select buttons off my Smart Swim. And you just watch on the carousel here and you'll see the carousel scrolling. And at each one that we arrive at the center at, I'll just describe you briefly what that app's used for. So the first one you see now in the center of the carousel is the lab trainer there. The lab trainer is used for training in the pool, in pool training. It's got the ability to load workouts, programmed workouts that you can just hit the go button and, and the computer walks you through it. Or it's a free form workout that you can scroll the workout. It's like a text file that you can open the, the free form workout and follow that. Or it's just a free swim. It's a free swim that says, I'm going to hit the start button once, do my workout, whatever my session is, hit the stop button, it'll save it as a session. Um, so let's quickly, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to press select here to open up that, uh, the lab trainer. You see it's opening now. And you see here it's saying, uh, it gives you the version number whatnot, and then right now it's asking you to press the, the start session button. Now, once I run this app now uh, and use it, Tomorrow, when I turn the smart swim on, the day after, whatever, it always remembers the last app you're using and will boot up to that app. So the only thing I have to do for each session now is I get in, I'm going to press the start, the start session with the select button. And then I get a countdown. It can be 10 seconds. All this are adjustable through the configuration tool, which we introduce you to in naming your smart swim. So you can go back to that tool and see all the other options you have there. But at any rate, you get a 10 second countdown and it's time to go. And then you put your head down. And you notice the swim state changes from red to green, which means indicating my head's down, I'm now swimming. I do a bunch of intervals, a bunch of sets, whatever that is. I stop. You notice I stop swimming and you'll see it goes from green, it transitions to red, and it gives you an interval time up there. You can see here, it tells you uh, the distance of the current interval, your pace you're on the total number of intervals you've completed. You get the total time here. And down here is the total yardage you've achieved. And over here, there are varying options. In this theme, we don't have a compass turned on. There typically is a compass heading there. But uh, you can see that that'll show up, compass heading. And you can adjust all this with your own personal theme. You can turn on and off all these options, change colors, change sizes, and change fonts for most of the apps that are user-facing apps. You have that ability. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to back out of the app. To back out of the app, so I'm going to press and hold select. You press and hold the select button, which is the back button, and you'll see that that will, it'll basically, if it wasn't saved, it's going to save that session for you, and it's going to take it back to the carousel. So now we're on the carousel. So now I'm going to scroll the carousel by pressing the up button. Let's go into the configuration tool. Now in here I told you about themes. Well, let's go see if we can change the theme. So I'm going to press select again. I press select. And then we'll go through some of the names, the device name you're already familiar with. And I'm going to go left or right eye mode. Unit standard, that's miles. You can pick yards, meters. So if I, if I press select again, it shows you there uh, meters, laps, yards, kilometers, um, whatever uh, you're, depending on what, what you're doing. At the time, if you're in, with a GPS app and open water, open water training, or just using GPS and navigational, you might want miles, kilometers. Versus if you're lap training, you want laps or you want yards or meters. Uh, so you get that. That's one of the settings. And then we'll go through here. There's a, there are several other settings. So you have the length of the pool. We have the countdown timer in seconds. That tells you you can adjust Every session in both GPS and that training, you have a countdown before it starts. So you press start, wait for the countdown, go. Log splits. Do you want to log splits into the session files? It's the split interval distance. Some people like 50 yards, 25 yards. Some people want to see their splits every 100 yards. If you're doing long distance intervals, your speed display format, and that can be miles per hour. That can be, we'll open that up here real quick, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, or it's split interval time. So split interval time would be uh, if you picked, 
say 50, if you wanted your split interval distance to be 50 yards, then it's going to tell you your time per 50 yards. If it's 100, it's time per 100 yards. And that's what your speed indication is going to be uh, on the display. Depends if you're in a lap training tool, if you're in the open water app. So here we have strokes per minute or calorie display. Okay, so we can open that up. And that basically says, uh, okay, what you have here is it's disabled. You'll see nothing on the display. Or it's enabled for swimming, which if you're lab training or in your open water GPS app, it's going to be uh, I'd use a different algorithm for determining your strokes per minute. Running and paddling, it's a different algorithm. So if I'm running with it on the road, if I'm paddling a boat, I'm going to pick that option. And then calories burned just says, I want to see my calories burned on the output. I don't want to see strokes per minute. It's going to switch the, that out. So let's keep going. Body weight. Some of these might be pretty obvious. Compass accuracy. There's the compass option as accuracy mode or as performance mode. Accuracy mode, you're going to notice it's a slower response, but it will be more accurate at determining your direction. And it does not use the gyroscope to do this. But in performance mode, it uses the gyroscope and it's, it's very fast. Very quickly it will respond to you. But there are times where it might not be as accurate. Also, uh, another note in the accuracy mode for the compass will save power. So if you're using GPS and typically in GPS mode, I try to put it in accuracy mode. So if I'm swimming long swims, eight miles or so, you might want to you get five hours on GPS versus three or so if it's in performance mode. GPS sensitivity is high. That means so this is basically a response to how fast that the GPS sensor is moving across terrain. So if I'm running or biking, I'm probably going to have it in run mode. But if I'm swimming, I'm obviously going to use swimming mode. And if I put it in low mode, that means I'm going to have an even more accurate distance measurement, slightly more accurate, and there'll be fewer uh, divisional points uh, in the mapping. But typically medium, I leave it for swimming. It's, it's a, a good compromise between the two. Okay, so GPS file format. We have uh, KML for Google Earth. We also support, um, uh, let me go back in there. Try that again, didn't mean to exit. We have uh, Google Earth, we have KML. If you press and hold select, it exits out of the option. If you press it once, it opens the option. So here we have KML, we have GPS file format for Garmin compatible uploads. So if you're in Garmin Connect, you can take the GPS files that you're saving and import them into your Garmin Connect account. So here you have GPS show tracks. You want to show tracks. So if you turn on yes, what that's going to do is give you in grid mode and it's going to show you in the GPS open water app, it's going to show you a grid with your chart and your just sort of like uh, the GPS mapping in your car. You'll see the, the points, data points and the grid laid out and you can overlay a course mapping on that grid and you'll see where you are relative to the start and the origin. Uh, and that's for the GPS open water uh, app. Zoom mode, so you can zoom in and out of the tracks. You have a real-time zoom in the app with the select buttons, but we also have the ability here to set a default position for the zoom mode. GPS course file is undefined. So the course file this is, a, like I just said, a mapping that if I outlined a course I was going to swim on, I can use uh, maps to define that course, or I can just swim it once and use that swim a session as a map for the next person who wants to swim the same session. And you will see that outline and that course map overlaid where you want to be swimming relative to where you are on that course. Display clock format. So here, some people like an analog clock, other people like digital. So you can pick pick an analog or digital clock format there. And the, the analog clocks, you can customize your own analog clock for the theme. You can pick different analog clocks that we ship with the system. And again, that's a different video we'll do for the creating your own themes. Media still image time. So this is for the media player, basically how how long you wait between transitioning with images if you upload images to for uh training out in the water or water training if you want to take personal images with you that you're listening to music and watching images of th of uh pictures of your family or other things you might want to take with you to watch that's so how long between each image before it, dis it transitions
and a snapshot period is disabled. But if you want to take continuous snapshots of uh, the head-up display while you're swimming, okay, you can basically turn this option on, and every so many seconds it will um, take a snapshot of the head-up display. This is more for uh, post review or post creating a video of what you were looking at, what you saw during the entire uh, session. Okay, and this is a display theme. So here we've got it on the biker theme, which is something I've been working on. But you can go through here and we'll just pick, uh, there are different themes here you can see. Um, let me go up, Iron Man theme. I'm just gonna go with, um, let's say Ocean Blue. We'll pick that one. And some of these themes I've handmade, other themes, they're default. We do have something like eight system themes. So we'll pick Ocean Blue there which is what I really wanted to see. And then we have a resource default settings. Okay, so when you resource default settings, everything gets cleared out, including your device name. So if you're gonna hit that, chances are it's gonna to wanna to schedule a reboot and a restart. But it will put everything in a default condition. Now you notice the background here has changed. You notice it's a light blue in the background there. And uh, you'll see other, uh, the whole basically the entire theme defines and most of the apps and in the carousel itself uh, what the color scheme looks like the idea is you don't it's boring maybe get boring every so many weeks you're gonna switch themes out try different uh, something that might be a little more relaxing to look at or is easier to look at depending on where you're swimming or we're using the tool if you're outside versus I'm indoors in a pool I might want a different theme black on white versus white on black might be easier to read the display depending on how the theme is configured. So that's the system configuration app. There's a lot, lot of details in there. So we go here, this is apps and updates. Okay, and this, this app is used, if I have Wi-Fi turned on on Swim, turn on the Wi-Fi and I connect to a Wi-Fi network, I can use apps and updates locally on my Swim and my local Wi-Fi network, say my home network, and I can go up to this private server and I can select from that, um, updates that might be up on the server and let me see am I connected I might be well let's try it we'll open it and see what we get here okay Wi-Fi connections required so I don't have the Wi-Fi turned on on my smart swim and one of the notes about that is the Wi-Fi consumes a lot of power so if you leave the Wi-Fi turned on here you're gonna go from five hour swims to two hour swims and you're gonna be scratching your head thinking why are we consuming so much power well you probably left the Wi-Fi interface turned on so whenever I can, I try to stay away from the Wi-Fi, but it depends on what, what you're doing. So I'm just going to hit select here, and it's going to open up the Wi-Fi settings for you. It says, hey, you wanted to do apps and updates, turn your Wi-Fi on now. And you can see here clearly that it is, it is turned off. See, it's black, and you can see if I were to press select now, it would go out and turn it on, and away you go. So let's try that. It may already know my home network here. So you'll see it trying to get an IP address and establish a connection. There it is, it's connected and it's on. You can see that clearly. So now I'm going to exit out. Now what we're going to do is the Wi-Fi signal is turned on. If you look in the upper right corner, you can see there's a little tiny Wi-Fi icon indicating we're connected. So now I'm going to hit apps and updates again. We'll open it a second time. Now it's connecting to the server. It sees it's got Wi-Fi, and it's going to go up there and try to give us a list or see if there's any updates waiting for us. And you see here there's no app updates available. So basically everything that's up there, the Wi-Fi update uploader is already installed on this swim. So we don't have any updates to go after. Everything is current on this smart swim. Okay, so that's apps and updates. Now I'm going to go over to Wi-Fi uploader. Since I've already installed it, it's the blue Marlin icon there once you install the uploader. And there's, we have a video on that, on how to use this tool. But I'm just going to open that up and let's see what happens. Okay, and there's the IP address we have. That's the network we're tied to. This is the port that the uploader uses. Don't really need to know. You will need to know and understand that if you are going to use Wi-Fi to transfer content to and from your phone. Very fast, much faster method mechanism of moving data from your phone to your swim. Um, but basically, there's another video for that you can, if you want to explore further into what that's about. So it's going to exit out of that. And again, I press and hold and we exit. So I'm going to 
move over again here. Now there's a couple other apps. Uh, oh, wrong way. Let's go the same way here. These are developer apps we have here. Uh, smart uh, stopwatch. That's just a simple stopwatch. That'll run for about seven hours if you've got everything turned off. And all it is, it displays the time. Uh, and it's really just an example as a developer. Hey, how do I program for this thing? And Smart Developer is really an app. It's a two-page app that shows you how to interface to the configuration tool and basic fundamentals about if you were to build or develop your own app for Swim. Okay, Sport DV Camera. We have a small waterproof camera we support with this app. You can uninstall this app if you're not interested in that or just leave it there. It tags along for the ride. And you can read up more about that. Uh, I believe we also have a video for that too, but... Uh, if not, it's well documented in our user's guide. A lot of good information there. But if we try to open that guy up, you'll see um, it's going to tell you the same thing, that it can't find the camera. Okay, and so we need to turn on the camera. I don't have that with me now, but if you were to turn on the camera, you would see that uh, it would automatically detect it and go. In the upper left corner, you see the yellow. The yellow is the Wi-Fi signal strength, and upper right is the time but there's other details about this app. So I'm going to exit out again, press and hold select. We exit. Let's go to here. Now this is a YouTube streamer. We'll get into this app here. This is really cool. This app is awesome. I, I When I was in the pool, I never thought I'd, watching videos would be such a joy and swimming at the same time. But you're swimming so slowly and there's nobody really in your lane. You want to think about a straight line. The black line becomes insignificant compared to, oh, look, I can watch a video for 45 minutes to an hour, training video, educational video, or maybe it's just something I want to see um, during my training, something to just pass time, YouTube videos. Love it. It's a great tool. You can explore this. It's very well documented in our uh, user's guide on how to use the tool. I'm going to hit select here. Let's see what happens. And you can see already there's a video playing in the background and there's a way to dismiss this foreground dialogue. It will auto dismiss eventually or you can just scroll down the cursor when you would stop and dismiss that. But you get an idea there. You can see in the background the video is streaming. That's streaming video through my home Wi-Fi. Okay, we're done with that. So I'm gonna press and hold it back out. Now we go to right, and this is the system settings. I'm going to open up system settings now. Here we have our system settings, and at the top you have the Bluetooth settings, GPS, location settings, date and time settings, Wi-Fi uh, info, and change settings. This is all Android standard Android operating system stuff. It'll just take you to where you need to go to configure all those options. And the display brightness, you can change here. All the apps will adhere to that. You have FCC certification logo. We have uh, licensing information, and we have apps control. This is in our apps control. This allows you to uninstall or clear the cache or data from any of the apps that are installed on your system, or any of the updates that you have. And so that's system settings. Now I'm going to again press and hold select here. So I'm going to back out of that. Okay, now you're back at the carousel again, and let's go over. This is open water. We'll go here to open water. And the first time you run the open water app, it's going to ask you, it's going to take you to the GPS settings if you didn't turn on the GPS location settings. And if you did, then it's going to come up to something like this. And it might take seven minutes to 10 minutes for the first time it's trying to lock on GPS. You've got to be outside, you've got to be away from buildings, you've got to be clear, just like any other GPS sensor on board. It needs to be able to see the satellite network to get a lock on it. And like I said, it might take seven to 10 minutes the first time you open and start. A lot of times what I will do is before I leave the house, if I'm going open water somewhere, I'll turn the system on, I'll put the, the uh, backpack on there, and uh, with the backpack on and charged, it'll be locking in the satellites before I even get to where I'm gonna be swimming in open water. My sport watch, since it's always on, it always has a lock from the time it turns on, so it's the same scenario. You don't have near as much time because it's always turned on and, and locked in. But for swim, because you're turning it off and on, you're going to have to keep in mind you've got that seven-minute window potentially. And here you can see we just locked in. We can just lock locked into the signal. 
and the satellite icon went from red to green. It's in pause mode now, and you want to wait for it to go to pause mode because there might be some time where it's still trying to figure out where you are at the start. If you go ahead of yourself, you won't have a good clean start, uh, start capture. So there's that, and up here is your average pace. That's your average pace or time that you, when you, from when you start your session, it's waiting for us now to hit the start button to start the session. Okay, but after we press start, that'll be your average pace from when the session starts to when it ends, including all the rest time. And then down here you have the total distance. So let me hit start here. I'm going to hit start. Okay. I just press start. That means you press select. I press start. And I get a 10 second countdown. This is the time, total time. Now we're in grid mode here. So grid mode means you get a grid with the GPS cords and track lay, lay down. In non-grid mode, it's all digital, so that the clock will be in the center of your eye, like in the lab trainer. So now here, you can see your pace is miles per hour, and up here is your, your total mileage, miles for, or distance for the segment you're swimming in. And down here is the total distance you swam or ran for that uh, session, for the total session. And down here, it's going to depend on what you want to display, whether it's calories, stroke rate, or strides per minute, that kind of thing. Here's your compass heading, that's pretty obvious, and this is the swim state or your run state. So when you're stopped and you're not moving, the swim state will turn red. See how it turns red and it gives you your, your time for that segment and tells you how far the segment was. Now we weren't going anywhere, we're inside a building, so the GPS is going all over the place. That's not going to work out for you too well. Okay, so there's that. But I can give you an idea, and there you see it went from red again to blue, which blue to green, which says, hey, you're moving again. So like I said, you can see the GPS points are moving all over. And in grid mode, you have the, the, the distance you are from the origin, and you, you can see the tracks that are getting laid down. There's a smart course track. There's the raw data course track, which is uh, in blue. The smart course is in red. And uh, if you do lay down tracks, you can pick the colors for everything, and you'd see the, the course track that you want to follow. And that's another video we can show you how to do. You can, either, you can either swim a course, you can run a course, and then use that course that you swam or ran with saved, and you can use that course as the course map, or you can build a course map using Google Maps, and we'll show you in another video how to do that, uh, depending on where you're going or where you're going to be swimming or you don't have to have any course at all and you put the system in digital mode <clears throat> which we can do here let me show you that uh, I think that'll be important here so I'm going to press and hold to get out again it's going to save that session I'm going to go back to um, remember we were on open water so we're going to go back to the configuration tool three four and you see where it's scrolling Okay, I'm going to open the config tool and I'm going to turn off uh, GPS track mode. So we'll go up, go up, media still image time, clock format, GPS course is undefined. The zooms are set at 1x and it says show tracks. So you see that show tracks, we're going to turn that off. GPS show tracks is set to no which is exactly what you want. No. Good. Cancel out of that. Now let's go back to our open water app, which is right over here. Make sure we get that right. I'm going to open up the open water app now. And this time you're going to see we're in digital mode. And in digital mode, you'll notice there's no grid. It's strictly the clock, average pace, distance for each segment, and then you have your instant pace down here, and over here you have your, your compass heading. So once again, we're going to wait, and you can see, okay, we just got a lock on the satellite. Notice it's locking much faster now, within seconds, uh, because internally the GPS is already on a satellite link, satellite network. And it's a red X. The red X with the green says you've got to wait a little bit here because it's still trying to figure out GPS is bouncing around. So now you're in pause mode and it's ready to go. So when you're ready to go, you're going to press the start button right here, boom. And that's all you'll have to do. Once everything's configured, you press the start button, you go.
and you get a countdown, four, three, two, one, you see the countdown in the center, your swim state's red still, and then you hit go. So I put my head down and I start swimming, and you notice the swim state goes to green, and the time is beginning, and you can see we are receiving data, but it's all over the place, so we're getting these random results here. And our compass heading is still north, south, but if I turn the system around, you'll notice the compass is now, we're pointing south. And then we go back, we're pointing north. And then if I stop and rest, you'll see the swim state goes from green to red. You give your, your pace time for that interval, of that segment, and it tells you the distance, uh, total distance if you travel is 0.01, and the I stands for miles. R is stroke rate. That's how fast you're, you're stroking. And there it is. So that's, that's the GPS, GPS app. And there's other details about it. If you look in our user's guides, you'll get more information about other things you can do. So now we're going to move over to the media player. Okay, this is our onboard media player. The onboard media player looks in the music directory, the pictures folder, and the movies folder for all of its content. So when you're transferring content from your phone or moving it into your smart swim, those are the three standard Android directories or folders that this media player will, will look into. It features, uh, oh, let's open that up. So we're going to open it up. And it features uh, background play through a sound service that you can turn on through the, the configuration options. So right away it starts playing the sound the, the, where it left off. It remembers where it was to, for uh, track and time and it immediately starts playing that. You will get the total time in the track eventually displayed um, if you have that enabled. But pretty much, um, let me show you here. I'm going to double click. If I double click select, it opens up the settings dialog. And you can go down here and you can see loop. There's a loop mode. There's autoplay mode. There's auto pause. You have the, head, the HUD features are on or off. And right now they're off. So you don't see any time or any kind of display of any information. And then we have background play on. With background play on, it's only going to play the audio tracks. And I'm going to press and hold to dismiss that dialogue. And if I press and hold again, it's going to exit the app. So anytime you want to dismiss a dialogue, you press and hold. If you want to exit the app, press and hold. Press and hold select. Get you out of there. Okay, so there you have it. And that's pretty much the short end of it, the, the media player. So we'll exit that. We have a video on uh, using a Wi-Fi uploader. We mentioned being able to use uh, your phone to record videos from your phone and then send from your phone to your smart swim that movie. And that movie could be a training video or it could be a session about somebody looking at you telling you how to work your stroke differently or just about anything that you could be looking at in real time while you're trying to uh, swim or fix your stroke or just learning how to swim. Okay, so that's the media player, and then we're going to go over one more, uh, and we're at the lab trainer. Essentially, that's all of the apps in, in your smart swim. And uh, there'll be other videos that you can uh, look through, and if you, again, look at our user's guide, there's uh, more details about each, each app and how they work, and uh, that'll give you a lot more information to draw from if, 